everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelsey and I am here to help you with all of your crafty needs. And today we are going to focus on an Inkscape tutorial. So I use Inkscape to make all of my SVG files that I give away for free on my website. It's also how I made my portrait class. Um, and if you're interested in the portrait class, I will have that linked below. And Inkscape is a free program that you can use to make your own SVGs if you don't wanna purchase them or be subscribed to Cricut Access. So this is going to be a very basic tutorial. We're gonna go over some of the buttons and then we're also going to make a an SVG together of a banana. So it's really simple. It's going to be a beginner's course. We'll go through everything and then we'll walk through step-by-step step on how to make your first SVG. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about what exactly is Inkscape. Inkscape is a free download. It is similar to Adobe Illustrate, but it's free. It's a free open network that people have created and they do all sorts of updates. They do add-ons. Um, it's just a free software that you can make digital art within. I use it to create all my SVGs because when I first got my Cricut, I didn't realize that you had to pay every month to use their SVGs. And so I wanted to learn how to make my own. Now we can walk through once you download what exactly are all of these functions, the basic functions that I use to create my SVGs. When you open up Inkscape, it's gonna give you this blank page. The center rectangle that you see there, that is going to be when you save, that's what's gonna show in your thumbnail. So just be aware of that. When I was first learning, I didn't know this, and I was actually selling SVGs before I was giving them away for free. And so whatever's in that little rectangle is what will show up in the thumbnail. So just be aware. These two arrows that you see at the top are going to be your select tool and your node tool. We're gonna to get into that more later. Um, nodes are basically all the points within your drawing and your select tool is going to be just like a select tool in any other program that you use. It's how you click and move things around. Moving down, you'll see the rectangle or the square tool. So when you click and drag this out, you're going to see your rectangle shape and then you can change the color along the bottom. There are a ton of different colors along if you scroll to the right. If you right click or if you go to the bottom, you'll see where it says stroke and I will get into strokes in another video and you'll learn a little bit more about them later but basically strokes are the lines on the outside to draw your image and sometimes I use them for score lines or for cuts within a cut. So right below the rectangle is going to be the circle, very similar, and if you hold your control button or your command button, it will keep the size of a square or a perfect circle. Now, if you are going back to the rectangle, you're going to see that in the corner, there are two circles. You can only see one right now, but if you pull those, right, I'm gonna remove the stroke. If you pull those down or to the left, it's going to give it a roundness in the corners. So this is a way to just create a rounder rectangle or square if you don't wanna have perfectly sharp edges. That's how you change it. And you do have to change this into a path for Cricut to read it. Um, but again, we will get into that in another video when we are ready to change shapes. And I do have some of them um, previously listed and I'll link those below. So the circle does have something similar, but the dots kind of change the shape of the circle to a half circle or even this strange like cut off the quarter, not like a perfect cut. So there are ways to change the circles as well. I rarely use these circles to change the shapes of the square and the circle. Sometimes I like to round out my corners for the rectangle, but that's about it. The next button down is going to be a polygon and a star feature. So you can change the number of corners and you can also change how rounded it is. Um, I wanted to see how far I could get it up. So the max is going to be 10 on this, the roundness. And as you can see, it kind of turns into this kaleidoscope of a shape. So you're not gonna really use this in your SVG building. Because when you think about the SVGs that you've used from people on Etsy or in Cricut Design Space, they're layers. And so you're not gonna really use a kaleidoscope kind of feature unless you're making a mandala, which is not something we're gonna get into today. So similar, if you go to this randomize, it just becomes this like weird shape. We won't be really using that in our SVGs. 
unless that's a look you're going for when you're layering something. So before we were looking at the polygon, which is on the left at the top, now we're moving over to the right, the second button over, and that's the star. And what we are going to see here is you can change the points, you can change the roundness of the spokes, um, you can change the spoke ratio, um, and this will give you all different shaped stars. So this is actually a super useful tool between the polygon and the stars. It's a great way to make really simple shapes, um, and then you can modify them and use them within your designs. The star shape also has this randomize. It's the same thing. It just becomes this weird shape that you probably aren't going to be using within your SVG designs. Now, you may, but I just, I've never used them. I've never needed to utilize the random. I do use the star quite a bit. I use the polygon, the circle, and the rectangle, but as is. The next button down is this 3D button. I thought that we could make boxes with this, 3D letters, all different sorts of stuff. You can't. I honestly don't know what this is used for. Um, I've tried it once and then I deleted it and moved on. The next one is going to be a spiral feature. Um, the only time I have utilized this was when I made rolled roses so that I could stay on the path of the spiral. So it is a very helpful tool. You just need to learn about your distance between. It's going to be a lot of tweaking and I will definitely be doing a future video on how to make flowers um, within Inkscape so you can be making your own flower SVGs for 3D flowers made out of paper. So make sure you are subscribed and have your alerts turned on for when those come out. So the spiral, again, you can change the center to how wide it is. You can change how far apart the lines are, the whole thing. So this is one of my most used tools. This is a Bezier tool, and so basically it's like a pen. So the first one at the top left where you see is going to be just from point to point. I probably use this the most out of anything when I'm making an SVG. So you're just going to go from one point to another and then you'll go back through and you will be able to change curves into these points and make it into more of a shape that you want. So a lot of people use this to trace, which is really how a lot of people can make SVGs. You can trace over an image and we're gonna do that at the end of this video. We're gonna make a banana SVG just so you can see how to utilize these. So the next one is the pencil. I rarely use the pencil. It's just from point A to point B. You can also draw on like weird shapes. I never use it. I'm not going to lie. I prefer the Bezier one where it's just from point to point and then I go through and I change everything. If you go back up to our Bezier tool, you're going to see four different versions of the Bezier tool that you can use. The second one's going to be a curved Bezier. I was originally using this one a lot and then I changed over to that straight point because I liked changing the points manually. I didn't want it to tell me where the curves would go. I want to decide that. I want to decide the nodes. So I really don't use these kind of pre-curved Bezier tools. So even look at the other two. I never touch these. I always just change my back to the first left side tool. This one's going from point to point. And then the last one is going to be it kind of like meets up with you. I don't know how else to describe it. So like if you click a point, it's gonna meet that point and then kind of catch up to it. So it's almost like you can pick a point way up top and it's gonna pull over the cursor that way. I don't know how else to describe it. But again, I don't use that one. I really just use the first of the Bezier tools in the top left. I go from point to point. I start with a really super geometric looking shape. You'll see when we make the banana. And then I go through and I change those curves via the nodes tool. Our next tool down is going to be this fountain pen looking tool. And again, I never use this. I sound like I never use half the tools. And it's true, I really don't. I use like really basic shapes to make my SVGs. If you have awesome handwriting with a mouse, I guess I would say, then this is the tool for you to do handwritten letters. However, I don't use that tool. I do use the text tool quite a bit. Remember to always download your fonts that you want to use before you open the program. If you download a font while you're using the program, you'll have to save, click out, and then reopen the Inkscape platform just like you would with Cricut Design Space to use these fonts. Um, I have a separate video on fonts and how to make them usable within Cricut Design Space because just typing it out in Inkscape, saving as an SVG, 
and then sending over to Cricut Design Space, it's gonna say the text is not legible. So you do have to change it to a path and I will link that video below in the description. As for the tools that are below the text box, these are gonna be for color gradients. Um, I do use the eyedropper to pick out colors because you can um, import an image and then use colors off of that image. You'll see when I do the banana. Um, the paint spill I never use uh, again because I fill it with a separate box which will be pulled up in a little bit. So let's make an SVG. So I just picked a general picture of a banana off the internet. You can really pick any image off the internet that you want. Just remember to obey copyright laws, please. And I'm using that Bezier tool. And again, I'm using the top left version, so it's just point to point. And you are probably thinking, Kelsey, that is a geometric banana that looks stupid. I'm literally just drawing an outline. We're gonna go back and round all of these nodes out and delete some of them. We're gonna change some of the lines, but I'm putting as many points as, as I see fit to make the shape of a banana. So now what I'm going to do is I use that eyedropper tool and I grabbed the color of the banana. You can see the other one's like a gradient and you can change the color of the gradient but you're not gonna use these in SVGs. Gradients and hues, because you want solid colors to make your layers. So for you to use a gradient, unless you're saving it as a PNG for a printing cut, you're not going to be using that. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and as you can see, you can move these lines around when you're in that node function, so the second function underneath the select tool. You're gonna have different ways to curve nodes, make them straight, um, play around with these. It's going to be this group here. And the only way you're ever going to see this kind of selection where you can play around with the lines is if you are in node mode. So make sure that you are when you're ready to start changing things around. So as you can see, I'm adding in notes by double clicking and it's gonna add them in. And then I'm rounding some out or I'm deleting them. So play around to see how it changes your shape so that you can make the shape of the banana or whatever image you decided to trace. So I'm starting very simple with this banana. Again, I'm just changing these nodes. I'm either deleting them or I'm rounding them. It's really that simple. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding in some layers once we have the shape of this basic banana. So you're gonna move things around, staying in node mode. I just hit N when I wanna go back into node mode and S when I wanna go out. I am on a Mac again, so it might be different than if you're on a PC. And while you're in this node mode, you also can be changing the lines around to make those rounder, to change the shape of it. And then I'm grabbing the eyedropper and just while I still have those nodes clicked, right? I'm in the select tool and I grabbed the eyedropper. I clicked on the banana and it took the color from the banana. That is all I did. Now my Inkscape, I usually have all these extra boxes open. So you're going to go to object and then fill and stroke. This is going to help you change the color of your image. So you can change the opacity and that's going to be important when we start to do layers, especially when we do layers of one shape, right? So I am going to change the opacity down so I can see inside that banana again. And then we can actually remove the stroke. So you'll go over to stroke paint and you'll see it's gone because you don't need the strokes when you're sending over to Cricut Design Space. You actually don't want them there. So just go ahead and remove those by right clicking or going over to fill in stroke and then the stroke paint and the X. So now we have our banana, the actual body, and now we're going to add in a second layer so it looks like the, almost like 3D or kind of just gives more shape to our banana. If you notice, I just oft clicked that top right part and then re-clicked it on, that clicks and links nodes to an, another node. So if you see my Bezier keeps clicking over to a node, I had to click off of that in the top right. That makes it so it doesn't magnetize to it. So now I'm making the top part and you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't look like the shape of a banana. And you're right, it doesn't. And we are going to use our intersect, which the best way to describe this is kind of like slice or in the new Cricut Design Space, they have that combine where the weld is. It's kind of like that. So as you see, I just took all my nodes and I rounded them to that shape of the banana. And now I'm going to turn my opacity up. I'm going to grab just that new shape that we just made and I'm going to change the color of it. 
So I, I did the one shape of the banana and now I'm doing another shade of the banana and I am going to remove my stroke. And so look, now we have two tones of banana and we're gonna duplicate that bottom part. I know this sounds a little confusing, I promise it gets easier. We're gonna go to object and we are going to go down to align and distribute. This is gonna give us a new box. Now we're going to use our centering tools. Play around with this box to see what they all do. There's distribute, there's a line. It's just like in Cricut Design Space, you just need to learn all the buttons. Now I'm going to show this one more time. I went and I aligned everything, right? So I have that second banana, I have the first banana, and I'm aligning them together. And then what I'm going to do is grab the second banana that we just did and the new shape that we made with the lighter yellow. I'm going to go to object, I'm sorry, path, and then I'm going to go to intersection. And what that's going to do is it's just going to leave us the part that is overlapped. And so now we have that top shape of our banana. So it's, it gives us another shape. It gives us a second part. So now the last part is just to draw on the ends of our banana. So I took off the picture and you are gonna have to delete the picture from the internet before you upload this to Cricut Design Space, but we're gonna draw our ends on both sides. So we have the little brown tip on the end and then where it connects to the other bananas. And we have to draw that in. So again, we're going to lower our op opacity. You're gonna change that back up before you save your SVG. I'm grabbing that Bezier tool again, and I am just going to go from pinpoint to pinpoint, kind of tracing the end of our banana to give it the brown tip. Now, obviously this doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna be gluing it on to the end of our banana to give it that shape. So I'm just going around and rounding some stuff. I am not trying to be perfect here. And then to do your fill, you'll just click on a color at the bottom, any color of brown will do. There's so many options. And again, you can use your fill and stroke to change the hue of that brown. And so I am just going to then add on the other tip to the other end. And again, I'm using that Bezier tool and I'm just going to draw out a banana tip. It does not have to be perfect. So here, I'm not going to use the intersection tool. I'm literally just making it so it overlaps correctly. And then the same for the end here. I am just drawing kind of like a trapezoid at the end here, making it kind of meet. And this is when you would want that magnet on for your nodes. And I just changed it to the same brown color and I'm gonna remove my stroke after I'm done rounding this out. This isn't like a huge, you know, crazy technique. It's just drawing points and then making them rounder and softer to give you the same shape. And there I removed my stroke line and we have a banana. So I'm going to delete my back image. I'm going to make sure my opacity is turned up on all of my parts because I want to be able to see all the colors. The top layer changed color, so I'll change that to a different hue of yellow. You can make it lighter or darker, whatever one you prefer. Delete the image behind it. Make sure the opacity is up all the way on everything again. And now we can save the SVG. So I'm highlighting over everything just so I can rotate it. And that's how you make an SVG. So if we save this and then upload it into our Cricut Design Space, each part of this banana, the three layers, are gonna be shown within Cricut Design Space just like you would see it on an SVG within their Cricut Access. But you made this and it's yours to keep, to use in Cricut, to use in Silhouette, or to even sell. Thank you so much for watching my Inkscape tutorial. I hope you got a lot out of it if you're a beginner. And please don't forget to comment below any questions that you might have on Inkscape. And I'll be making more of these tutorials and progressing along with different techniques that I use to make my own SVGs so that you can continue to make your own SVGs and grow in your crafting needs. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I cannot wait to teach you again. Happy crafting.